the laboratory diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction. The first one is lab diagnosis. Lab diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction is our topic. So, the serial testing for the creatinine kinase isoenzyme that is called as CKMB. This is specific for the cardiac muscle, but may also be produced uh, from different sites also. So, this CKMB, the creatinine kinase, appears within 4 to 8 hours. Appears within 4 to 8 hours after infection. CKMB is seen that is appears within 4 to 8 hours after infection and peaks at 24 hours. The peak values of the CKMB is seen that is after 24 hours after infection and completely disappears completely disappears approximately within 1.5 to 3 days after infection. 1.5 to 3 days. Very, very important MCQ point you need to. So, these are the language based questions. So, this specifically asks you about at what time they start up here, what is the peak time and by what time they disappear, right. They start up here within 4 to 8 hours after infection. Peak value can be seen after 24 hours, peak value and they disappear that is approximately after 1.5 to 3 days after infection, right. So, what about the sensitivity as well as specificity for CKMB, the sensitivity and specificity is 95 percent. This is also an MCQ question. The sensitivity as well as specificity is 95 percent. But remember that the CKMB is not specific only for acute myocardial infarction because it may also be increased in myocarditis, muscular dystrophy, rhabdomyolysis that is rupture of the muscle and also it may be elevated in uh, polymyositis. So, even in such conditions you can see the elevation of CKMB there is a reason it is not restricted only for acute myocardial infection that is the reason this one decreases the test specificity, but however, they are not common disorders whatever the disorders you can see over here. These are not the common disorders that the reason they are easy to differentiate from acute myocardial infection. So, this is what is about CKMB. So, what about reinfaction? Reinfaction means reappearance of the cardiac enzymes. Whenever there is a reinfaction, again there will be elevation of the cardiac enzymes. And remember that reinfaction can occur approximately in 10 percent of the patients who are suffering from acute myocardial infection, right. Next one is serial testing of the second one, serial testing of troponins. troponins T as well as troponin I. The second test is the test for troponins. So, what are troponins actually? These troponins normally regulate the calcium mediated muscle contraction. So, both the cardiac troponin I as well as cardiac troponin T appear within 3 to 12 hours. So, first to appear, appear within 3 to 12 hours after infection means before CKMB. That is the reason the first biomarker after acute myocardial infection will be troponins. So, that is the reason appear within 3 to 12 hours peak values same like CKMB 24 hours peak values 24 hours important MCQ question, important MCQ question over here and disappears within 7 to 10 days. The stay for longer periods of time disappear 
disappear approximately after 7 to 10 days. So, the sensitivity of 84 to 96 percent and specificity of 80 to 95 percent and these troponins may also increase in non-ST segment elevated myocardial infections, unstable angina, pericarditis, myocarditis. They may also be elevated sometimes in left uh, ventricular hypertrophy, congestive heart failure as well as renal failure as you can see the list over here. It can be elevated in all these conditions. That is the reason it also decreases the test specificity which is evident in its wide range of specificity but considered to be the gold standard for diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction. So, in the exam if they ask you what is the gold standard testing for the diagnosis of myocardial infarction your answer should be troponins. Not only it is useful for the diagnosis of myocardial infarctions which are acute in nature these troponins can also be used in diagnosing reinfarction in patients in whom reinfarction is suspected and intermediate measurements especially of the cardiac troponin I is recommended and the second sample should be obtained uh, like uh, 3 to 6 hours later and if the cardiac troponin concentration in the second specimen is increased by 20 percent or more then the reinfarction is 100 percent sure this is how you need to identify the reinfarction by using the troponin levels. Generally in majority of the hospitals these days the troponins are primarily used for the diagnosis of acute myocardial infarctions but as a practical point if you see irrespective of the time frames which are already mentioned in the lecture for the appearance of these markers neither CKMB nor troponins consistently appear in the blood within 6 hours of the ischemic event. Hence, the serial studies are continuously required to rule out an acute myocardial infarctions. But when compared to these, what is the best test to evaluate the acute myocardial infarction is the ECG. Because ECG can be obtained immediately, right? After ECG, after a couple of hours, only for like uh, the confirmatory process, you will use the CKMB as well as troponins. So, this is what is about uh, the cardiac biomarkers specifically when we talk about uh, CKMB as well as troponins. Correlation of ECG changes with the pathological changes. For example, if you see the inverted T waves, the inverted T waves correlate with the area of ischemia at the periphery of the infarction. And when we talk about the elevated ST segment in the second ECG over here, the elevated ST segments correlate with injured myocardial cells surrounding the area of necrosis. And when we talk about the third one, which is new Q waves, these new Q waves correlate with the area of coagulative necrosis. This is how you can identify the pathological changes associated with the ECG changes. And what about the classic ECG patterns one can see in acute myocardial infarction and this topic is very very important for like your MCQs. Whenever there is a thrombosis of left anterior descending coronary artery, for example let us see the first event. If there is a thrombosis of left anterior descending coronary artery, it produces an anterior wall infarction because we know that left anterior descending artery gives blood supply to the anterior wall of the left ventricle. That is the reason there will be an anterior wall infarction. So, there is a reason there will be Q waves which can be seen in the leads V1 to V2. What about the anteroseptal acute myocardial infarction? So, the anteroseptal acute myocardial infarction can be caused by the thrombosis of uh, the proximal left anterior descending coronary artery even in such cases one can identify the Q waves in the leads V1 to V2. And when we see the anterolateral MIs, the anterolateral MIs is caused by the thrombosis of the mid left anterior descending 
or may be due to the thrombosis of the circumflex coronary arteries in which the Q waves are seen in the leads V4 to V6 as well as AVL. What about the lateral wall acute myocardial infarction? So the lateral wall acute myocardial infarction is caused by the thrombosis of the left circumflex coronary artery even in such cases one can identify the Q waves in the leads 1 as well as AVL. And let me talk about uh, the inferior wall acute myocardial infarction. So the inferior wall acute myocardial infarction is caused by the thrombosis of the right coronary artery. In such cases you can see the Q waves in the leads 2, 3 as well as AVF. Okay. So, this is about the ECG findings in acute myocardial infarction.